Hello and welcome to this NTI production. I'm Richard Bloomfield from NTI and I'm delighted to be bringing you this tutorial video on the ACA computer-based exam software. Now, why do I need it? Why as a JIB student do I need uh, an exam software tutorial video? Well, many of you will be aware and we've emailed all of our JIB students to let them know that the current CBE software that was used from 2018, 2019 and the 2020 exams is defunct. Well, the software is not necessarily defunct, but Adobe removed Flash Player, which made it, uh, which made the software unusable. Now, uh, one of our brilliant JIB students spotted this, that they'd watched our exceptional their words, not mine, are exceptional tutorial video on the software. But when they went to practice on it on the JIEB website, it didn't work. It didn't load. So we immediately uh, got in touch with our, our contact at the ICAW. And they said, yeah, it's defunct. We'll be releasing new software. And and, and Andy has been brilliant in, in, in pursuing this. Um, and they said there'll be new software. It's, it's going to be the ACA software again. So it's the same as the ACA exams. Um, and it will be used for the ACA, ACA exams from March. Uh, and they'll be putting it to the joint board to use for the 2021 exams. Now, we're aware that they're, they're, they're putting this before the joint board on the 24th of February. I'm recording this on the 23rd of February. It's nothing like NTI being hot off the press. Uh, it's unusual for us, isn't it, uh, that, that we, we have these uh, exclusives. But our aim is to bring you as soon as we possibly can, the stuff you need to pass the exam. And I, I don't think there's many more things, uh, many things more important than the exam software. So it's worth noting whenever you're watching this, that the joint board need to approve it, which uh, I don't envision they won't. First of all, it's really good. And B, they're committed to using the ICAW. That's why they're having this meeting and have used it for the last few years. Um, and they're also, from this tutorial video, maybe some tweaks. I don't know whether the joint board have the power to get the ICAW to, to change the software to suit the joint board. Um, and if there are, of course, what I will do is I will record a new video. So this one won't even exist anyway uh, with any new changes or anything else we find out about it. So enough of that. You want to see this software, don't you? So first things first, I only stumbled across it because I thought, well, if, if it's from March that uh, that the software is being used for ACA, there must be a trial or practice software somewhere for the chartered students. So a quick ACA CB software Bing search. Yeah, I know. Who doesn't use Google? I, 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 don't, I need to change my default. Um, and it brings up this second search, exam software ICAEW. That's the one you want. I don't, I don't know how high that will rank on your Google search, but I'm sure you can find it or just copy this uh, this link as you see it. Uh, you see it here. Um, don't use the ACCA software. Obviously, it's the ACA. It's on the ICAW website. So uh, a, a quick a, a quick click of that will bring up a bring up a web page like this. Just already got it open just in case my Wi-Fi runs a bit uh, a bit slow to make this tutorial video um, as seamless uh, as possible. And you get all the details here. So just to reiterate, it's only currently approved for the ACA exams. We're still waiting for board, joint board approval. So anything you see on the ICAW website just refers to the accountancy exams, the exams it's being used for, the functionality it has, what you'll be required to, 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 to do. You know, it talks about being a, uh, the professional skills you need to demonstrate to be an auditor. Could send, send shivers down many people's spines at this point. But the purpose of this video is to show you the software and uh, and show you how it, it would work for the uh, JIEB exams. And that's going to be my job for uh, for the rest of this video. First of all, I'm going to show you how to access it. About a third away down this web page is uh, download the blank exam practice software. Uh, so well worth doing. Other stuff on here, you might want to watch the uh, 43, uh, 44 minute video uh, from the ICAW about the software. And there's there's some semi useful questions from students. Most of them are about the exam itself. Can I bring paper? Can I bring my own laptop? And and these types of things, which I think you, we want to move away from that. We want to focus on it from an insolvency point of view, which we can do once the software is approved by the board. 
So I would download the blank practice exam software. Uh, it invites you to download it. Uh, and there's some important guidance uh, that pops up. Now, this looks pretty daunting, three pages of guidance notes, but most of it is uh, is pretty waffly. Uh, all you do is uh, hit, hit the link, download this zip file, as you can see here, HTTP eLearning ICAW.com training blank 2021 software and download it. Now, depending on your broadband, that could take some time. Once it's downloaded, uh, you might get the option to save as. Um, I, I, it didn't pop up on my screen. I had to right click to, to go and find save as on the download file uh, and then save it somewhere on your, uh, on your computer. I would save it exactly as the file name is. Don't change the file name. There's a little problem with doing so. Um, then you go into the file location, open it and hit extract all because it's a zip file. So you want to extract all the files. This could take some time. It took it took about a, an hour and a half, I think, for mine to extract all of those files. So be patient. Don't do this when you urgently need it. Do, do it, you know, as soon as you watch this video. Really, I would I would go onto the software and download it and, and and get it get it fired up. Once it's there, it's there for you to use whenever you need it. Um, it will then ask you where you want these extracted files to be saved. Save it wherever you think most useful. I've just saved it on my desktop um, and save the folder as something without any spaces in it. So it defaults, I think, to ICAW blank software, um, but don't change that and put a space between any of the words. Um, it, will, it will mess up later on. What it actually does when you ever do a question on the software, it saves it as a PDF, but it automatically saves it to the folder um, that you've just created um, but it will, it will have a problem saving if you've changed the file name to have spaces in it all you then do is click on assessment master to launch the software this will um, open it uh, and you'll be asked for a uh, username and password practice 21 exam and practice 21 exam is your username and password and then you are in to practice on the ICAW exam software. And that's it. If you get any problems at that stage, uh, let us know. Um, and we can point you in the direction of the ICAW or we can forward the questions for you if there's a, a problem. It's worth noting this is not compatible with Apple. There are separate instructions you need and you need to contact the ICAW helpline, which is listed on, the, on, on this website. Um, and they can tell you how to do it. I mean, I wouldn't use Apple. The exam's going to be on a Windows uh, computer. So I would suggest you, if you haven't got one, you get a cheap laptop. You can pick up a laptop now for a couple of hundred quid um, for the purposes of your JIB exams and practice on that to create the real event as best you can now this opened as default when i opened this software in firefox i don't know if you needed that need that downloaded on your computer or it works in other web browsers but but maybe firefox is that is the best one for it because it takes a little time to open uh, i've already opened the software so what you're now seeing on screen is the exam software it opens up a front exam sheet it says icaw notes to candidates and guidance of what the what will happen with the exam now, at this point, um, this is what you'll see on the practice software. I note that there's no timer at this point. Uh, I don't know if it does in the ACA exams, but I'm very, very hopeful it will for the joint board exams that you have a countdown timer on the software or whether we'll revert back to clocks in, in the exam room. All of these questions, of course, NTI uh, will bring you the answers as soon as we, uh, we have them. If you do have any questions at any time, we'll amalgamate them and we'll speak to the joint board as we, uh, as we often do or the ICAW if it's software specific. So this is the exam screen that you will see. Now, what appears to happen here is that you've got the questions to filter through down the left-hand side. And they will appear in this pane, in a large pane on the left-hand side of the screen, which is which is useful. The old software used to require you to dock the question. It would appear in the middle and you'd have to sort of fit it in, which it did cause a lot of problems the first year of the exam, that it didn't quite fit very well. Um, and I never understood why it didn't just it didn't just fit on the screen where you needed it to. Um, but anyway, the question now appears to pop up beautifully here. Uh, and, that, uh, and that's going to be really, really useful. You'll be able to view your question there. Now, what's really useful at this point to note is you've got these three little dots here and here. This will allow you to, to shrink that pane to fit roughly where you have how much uh, 
typing screen you need to be able to see and, and how good your eyesight is to read the smaller font, the smaller you shrink the question. Now, really important to me is that this is all in one function now. The best thing about this software is that we now have a word processor mode. This is up here. And we have a spreadsheet area. Now, we never had this before. You used to have the annoying thing with the old JRB software, for those that have seen it and used it, where you used to have to type your answers into a cell. And you would write, And you would do that and you'd have to switch word processor mode on, make sure it was all visible in a cell. And it was just like, why on earth are we uh, you know, doing an exam which requires 70% normally of typing answers and 30% numbers? And the majority of the software or all of the software is, 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 is a spreadsheet, which is there to be for numbers questions. It didn't make a lot of sense. But the good news is we are now in a position where this software is absolutely going to work for all of our needs. The brilliant news is you'll type your written answers in here. Uh, liquidation is a process to end the company. Whatever you were typing in the answer, hopefully the questions will be this easy uh, that year. And, you know, we love a step two at NTI. Here, the company is insolvent. And we've been made aware there will be a spell checker on this, but um, I can't see it anywhere on this practice software. So maybe that's something they're going to import for the JIB exams or something I just I haven't found yet. I've done about four or five hours practice on this software. I haven't found it yet, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll update you on that. And you are just going to gleefully type your answer into the word processor mode. Now, it's worth noting you'll type all of your answer for question one in one word processor area and then your whole answer to question two in, uh, in, in a new word processor mode. So you just hit that the right hand button at the top there. I'll just show you that again. I click that uh, quicker than I meant to. And it will then load up a new screen. And the question will appear. So we're now on two. So I'm just clicking these arrows here at the top. Or you can hit the drop down and you can select what question. This is the ICAW software. So there are five questions. There will only be four, of course, for JIB. So make sure you type your answer to question two in the question two pane uh, and so on. Again, each time you need to drag your question to the size that you wanted. So what do we have? I'm just going to show you now sort of how, to, how you're going to complete your answers. Probably the most important thing to note at this point before I show you the spreadsheet area is when you do numbers, you'll do them in the spreadsheet area, obviously. Um, but what you need to be aware of is that area of your screen does not get submitted to the marker for marking. Anything you do in that screen has to be copy and pasted into the word processor area. So let's say you've done statement of affairs as at November 2021 or whenever you're watching this. You know, I'm just giving you a bit of a demonstration here of how this would work. Fixed charge assets. Just want to drag that cell. Now, it's worth noting at this point, I'm going to do a full demonstration of the spreadsheet area uh, a bit later on. But what's really important to note is this is effectively Excel. We, I used to refer to the previous software, no offense, ICAW, if you're listening, as Excel's idiot cousin. It just wasn't quite as useful. It didn't have the full functionality. The formulas weren't quite as useful and the sum button wasn't quite as good. And you didn't have that brilliant little uh, square at the bot bottom right hand corner of a cell to repeat a formula. Stay tuned to find out whether they have been uh, brought in now. So if this was my uh, statement of affairs in my numbers question, I might have a book value, 100,000, estimated to realize 75,000, cheap property, must be must be Ipswich. Um, j j just kidding, Ipswich town fans, got enough on your plate. Um, statement of affairs in here, and all you would do, just, just to do that again, exactly as you can in Excel, you could copy uh, and paste. You've got cut and you've got copy here. 
shortcuts work, control C, or you can right click exactly as you can in Excel. I'm a control C kind of guy, control V, and it will copy and paste your numbers into the word processing area. So you now have this brilliant answer within, within this page. So let's say it was you're doing question two and part A was prepare a statement of affairs. You've now got your statement of affairs as part A. You've clearly marked the subpart you're working on. Sometimes there's a bit of a scrolling issue. That's not quite resolved. It seems better than the old software where you used to be typing and it wouldn't, it wouldn't scroll down with your typing. But uh, there still seems to be some issues, particularly when you've imported numbers questions. And then part B might be a written question. It might be, what is a statement of affairs? Explain that to the director. A statement of affairs is whatever. And you would type your answer in here. It is prepared at the date of liquidation. Or, or whatever you may be typing so you can see here now i've got numbers imported it, it is it, it doesn't seem to be scrolling down with what i'm uh, what i'm typing um that's a bit annoying when you're just doing a, a whole typed answer it does seem to tab down with you uh, and then you might have a part c clearly mark it and you continue typing this means your whole answer has to appear in the word processor area so this is effectively your spreadsheet area is almost like a note taking part where I'm calculating my numbers and then importing them into. If you do not import into the word processing area, it will not get marked. I think that's probably the biggest piece of advice I can give you on this on this video. Worth noting that these numbers here, these little three little dots um, can shrink where the question pane, but they can also make the word processor screen bigger. And the um, numbers screen bigger although annoyingly when you make the numbers screen more visible it doesn't expand the size of the excel uh, spreadsheet so that's that's slightly uh, slightly annoying so if i was just shrinking that down like this i'd now be able to type my answer it's worth noting that on my size i'm on a laptop that the, the, the question pane is still i'm still getting a lot on a page without having to to scroll down you do have the ability to change the change the font and the font size so you may decide that you're more happy with maybe font size 10 which means i'll see more on the page as i work through And that will, that will mean less scrolling up to see what I've typed or check that I've put something in my answer. Worth noting that when you hit enter down, it automatically spaces paragraphs. You know NTI are passionate about laying out your answer in a, in a way that's easy to mark. Well, this software is doing it for you. It's actually putting a space between each one. We like nice headings. Um, so, you know, at this point, you might put directors you have bold, underline, and italics to make your headings stand out if you want them. The directors are legally responsible. Abbreviation is only able if you have done it before. Try not to talk while I'm typing because that may affect the sound of, uh, on, this, uh, on this webinar. Directors are legally responsible for preparation of statement of affairs. Here... And again, you have the access to all of the things to make it neat and tidy. Should you wish a balance between making your answer look beautiful and the time restraints of the joint board. The problem with switching the font is if you don't hit all the areas or leave that ticked on or click out, it then may default back to 12. So I think that's a bit of a balancing act, something for you to decide what you, uh, what you think is best based on your practice on the software. whatever you may be typing in your answer. Are the directors willing to do so? And now you have numbers and type in one area that can be easily be marked by an examiner. The actual ability to do the numbers was done within Excel, but it's then copied and pasted into the word process area. This is great news, JIB students. It's everything we wanted. I can type my answers freely without having to type in a cell, having the risk of deleting a whole answer. I now also have the ability to lay out my answer in word, with all the functions of a good word processor.
but also when I do numbers, I have the ability still to be able to use an Excel equivalent. But now the spreadsheet is even better than it was before. It is essentially does everything that Excel does. I mean, it is, it's an import of Excel. If you look at it, it's even got the tabs at the bottom. It's got the little percentage. It's got the average. It's, it's Excel, isn't it? It's, it, it is an import uh, of Microsoft Excel. So anything else we need to know about word processor mode? Uh, you can superscript and subscript. Not sure why you would want to. You can do numbered list and bullet points. The JIB hate you doing lists and, and it looks like you're regurgitating law into an answer. They like you to you know, think practically. So I would avoid bullet points. I, I guess maybe if you were doing a list of uh, a list of uh, things to be appended to a progress report, you could just quickly do those as bullet points. That wouldn't be uh, the worst idea. But generally, I'm, I'm not sure you'd need them very often. You can increase and decrease indent uh, and you can uh, align center, justify your answer, etc. You should always be justifying your answer. Of course, that's a key part of joint board. Um, but whether you need to actually justify in terms of layout, uh, I, I, I'm not quite so sure. Um, I will check with the joint board whether they have any preference, but I'm, I'm not sure. As long as your answer is in the page and looks tidy, that will be fine. Um, you can undo more good news about the software the old software allowed you to go back five functions so basically if you made a mistake it would go back five five words or five types or five copy and paste which isn't very far particularly if you made a mistake and you're looking down at your your screen you're not a touch typist by the time you realize you've deleted a cell or made a huge mistake on the software it was often too late and you couldn't recover your work an absolute nightmare in the exam now the undo function goes back as far uh, as far as you possibly need i'm not going to demonstrate but but you can take my word for it you hit undo it'll go back as far as you you need it to to recover any mistakes same then with the forward function you can insert a table. Again, I've absolutely no idea why we'd want to. You actually have a spreadsheet here, an Excel spreadsheet to do spreadsheets and tables and, and numbers answers. I, I, I can't think of any reason you would want to insert a table. I guess maybe you would be you could be asked to do a proxy schedule and you might want to do proxies for against and do a table but again you could maybe just do that in the in excel and import it into the into the word document but um it's there if you need it the other things you have this is sort of less word processor area but but key tips you can flag a question you've got a flag up here you can highlight a question so you'd actually be able to click the highlighter on and highlight some keywords in the question again not convinced you need it i think any keywords or key facts of a question you'd you're going to put onto your plan uh which which we will check with the jb we're confident you will get scrap bits of paper uh, again this year um to to, to to do your plan on um you might want to highlight the question facts where you're doing numbers questions. You want to just mark a paragraph as dealt with. I've dealt with the stock. I've dealt with the book debts. I've dealt with the fixed charge, perhaps. There is now a, a, a notepad section, which you could do notes on. Again, if you are given paper in the JIB exams, I much prefer planning on paper. I think it's more creative. It gets the, it gets the juices flowing in the brain and, uh, and, and, and really gets you thinking about what you're going to do. And I think typing maybe doesn't have quite the same creativity, but it's there if you think it's useful for you. And you have a calculator, should you wish to do uh, calculations on there. Again, we'll check with the JIB whether calculators will be allowed or you will be required to use the one on the screen. I don't like it. I'd much rather have a calculator next to me than have to do it that way. But it, it, it may, that may be what they require you to do. Again, everything you need to know, we'll keep you, uh, we will keep you updated. So. That's pretty much it for your word processor mode. It's pretty simple, isn't it? You've got a big white box. Type your bloody answer in it. That's that's about all you about all you need to know. Um, make sure that you you're in the right question, and make sure if you do in, uh, type do anything in Excel as part of a written question that it is copied and pasted in. Other than that, you're you're good to go. So uh, one of the other issues with the old software is when you switch bold on, you are often not able to switch it off. And then your whole answer appeared in bold, which is really annoying. Doesn't appear to be a problem. Or certainly not uh, a problem I've encountered in the first five hours of, uh, of practicing with this software. Yeah, it was a fun evening in my house last night. So let's look at the spreadsheet function. What do we need to know about this spreadsheet function? Well, it's Excel. 
So if you are familiar with as an insolvency professional and accountant, I'm sure you are, you are probably better at Excel than, 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 than I am. It's my only disappointment because I had spent ages i'd spent months and months getting to grips with the old cbe software and finding out all the little nuances around uh, where it wasn't as good as excel and all the hints and tips and i feel i added huge value to to joint boards students journey in passing the exam i think now that it's excel and you're all brilliant on excel i i maybe i'll no longer be needed and i certainly can no longer call myself the cbe software expert um if you know how to use excel you know how to do this now, a couple of little tips. You can shrink the size of the font. You can, down the bottom right here, you can change the percentage uh, size. I think that's useful. 100% from on my screen anyway. Um, looks pretty big that I'm, I'm going to have to keep scrolling down uh, to get to the next line. Uh, from my point of view, with my um, old, old eyes, sort of a 60% uh, looks about right to be able to see it uh, and have about 17 rows in view. Worth noting at this point, the joint board had massive problems with the old software when they first launched it in 2018 in that it originally didn't have enough columns, it only had 13 columns, no, it had 12 columns, I think, uh, which wasn't enough to do a 12 month cash flow. If you needed each month and then a totals column and a, a column at the front, it didn't have enough. So they then added extra uh, columns. But then that reduced the rows to 100 rows, which then meant students actually 100 rows wasn't enough to complete uh, complete their answer. There are now 200 Excel rows and more than enough columns, whatever letter T is in the alphabet. Maybe that's something I should know. Uh, but there's more than enough to do uh, the most you would need a 12 month cash flow um, uh, to, 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 to do that. If you ran out of room on here. You can add another tab. So maybe do your statement of affairs on sheet one from question one. And then say there's a cash flow in question four. Do your cash flow in sheet two just to make sure you've got enough space within the spreadsheet. So rather brilliantly, what you are able to do is use the functionality of Excel. So what I'll do is I'm going to go through what you can do. And this is going to be almost like teaching your granny to suck eggs because you know how Excel works. But it's useful for me to go through line by line and tell you what this software does that the old software doesn't. Probably more so for those that have done the exam on the old software and want to know the differences. If you're doing the exam for the first time, you'll just be like, well, this is easy. This is great. It's like Excel. But it's worth doing anyway. So the software will allow you to type your answer. Worth noting that when you're putting your answer into Excel, it opens that cell in sort of mini view and, and, and makes it bigger. That's useful if you've shrunk the screen. It shows you what you are typing. Now, maybe let's say goodwill was worth a million pounds. One of my, one of my hot tips before One of my hot tips before on the old software was that um, you don't have that little comma button that Excel does. So put the comma in manually so you can clearly see the big number is that you know, when you've got lots of zeros, it's difficult to actually see uh, when you're when you're sort of looking at it, uh, if, if it's the correct number. Um, the good news is. The new software does have the comma button. It's under numbers here. You see this big percent sign. It's under numbers and you've got the comma. I would highly, highly, highly recommend that when you start a numbers question, any numbers question, go into the tab, go into the spreadsheet, highlight the whole cell or, or certainly anywhere you're going to be typing numbers in as far down as you think you're going to need. And then click on this and hit this comma button. And it is now going to make anything you have typed or are about to type in the future a number. Now, it's it's annoyingly now meaning it doesn't fit in a cell. So like Excel, you can drag the cells to the size that you need to fit them. And now you can clearly see it's put the decimal point in. It's put the comma in. So you can clearly see that the top figure there for book value is 100,000 and the goodwill is clearly a million. I mean, this is a liquidation, so it's unlikely the goodwill is worth anything, but it uh, doesn't matter. This is just for demonstrative purposes. And now you've got this brilliant uh, Excel spreadsheet. You've got two figures to add up. You now want to do your total fixed charge assets. By the way, if you're an NTI student, 
watching this. Uh, at the end of March, we've got some numbers webcast where I'm going to basically do this for each uh each numbers pro forma so i'm gonna do a statement of affairs live using this software i'm then gonna do a uh uh, a cash flow and an RMP and an EOS and stuff uh, and actually do it all on the software and, and look at it so if you're an NTI student you can look forward to that via webinar if you're not tough um what you can now do you've got two choices you could do equals plus and minus it has all the formula functions that excel does because it's excel um 1.1 1 .1, or of course if you want to if it's two figures in a row you could use the sum button now it's worth noting the sum button is not on this toolbar you have to go to formulas and go to auto sum that seems easier than equals plus or minus I will go through all of the stuff you've got here. If you did miss something out, you can still insert a row. So let's say you forgot a, a large piece of plant machinery, which is fixed charge, and that's worth 100,000. Because that's a new row, it has forgot that you wanted all of them in, which is a bit annoying. And it's not quite as clever as Excel that it hasn't. It hasn't, it, because you've used the plus or minus, it hasn't redone the formula. Another reason why uh, why you would be better off doing uh, doing the sum if, because let's say that was 50,000. The sum button knows you've added a line and would expect that to be included within that calculation, so it would redo it. So again, if of course, same as Excel really, if you're adding columns in a row, then use the sum button, not the equals plus and minus, because when you add a line in, the sum button will automatically recalculate for you where the plus and minus won't, because you didn't add that cell. You have to manually go back in. But again, it's easier to manually go back in the, than it was on the last um, the last piece of software you do now have these brilliant things where you can just do a bottom border they were on the old software um, i would use them i think laying out numbers and making them neat is incredibly important so um it now looks pretty neat just to just to complete this less due to fixed charge holder again it will it will it will uh when you copy and paste, it would expand that cell to put it in. Um, let's say the fixed charge uh, fixed charge holder old owed a million pounds. Easy for me to say. And again, this is worth noting because I've hit the comma button. It's not only put the commas in and the decimal point for me. It also knows that I wanted it as a minus because I put the minus in and put it in brackets, which just looks beautiful, doesn't it? Uh, which which the old software didn't do for us. deficit wait a minute uh, uh let me just show you something in the spreadsheet it tells me i've spelt something uh, uh spelt something wrong i did that deliberately by the way um which means i could in theory then click into it maybe i can't now yes i can um it now tells me it's wrong I thought it would let me change it, but it but but, but it doesn't. I'm sure, it did earlier. Maybe it's got clicked out of the cell. Not that it overly matters, but uh, if they're inserting a spell check function into the word processing area, which again I, ha I can't find yet, um, it would indicate that you've got to be fairly accurate even in the in in this area to change it. So it's worth going back and changing it if it flags up something that's spelt wrong, providing you know how to spell it correctly. Um, so I'm now going to work out the deficit. So I'm going to do that one: d12 plus d14. M&M's band, wasn't it? D12, um, which leaves me deficit to fixed charge holder minus 365. Again, comma has been hit, so it automatically knows that's a minus, puts it in, and everything is brilliant. It's everything we dreamed of. It's everything we wanted from this software. And it was released in 2018. Everything we needed for a joint board student. Now, it's worth noting there's loads of other stuff within this software, none of which that I, I think you're, you're, you're going to need, other than what I'll show you in a minute. You can insert tables, charts, pictures, shapes, barcodes, hyperlinks, 
It's worth noting that this is the ACA software again. So whether the joint board are going to request that some of these options are removed, um, I don't know. I don't even know whether they have the ability to, whether it's ICAW saying this is our software, use it or not, or, uh, or they have the power to change it. I think they'll probably just leave it in and, and you'll just have to decide that, that most of this is 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 irrelevant. We don't we don't need tables and charts, I wouldn't think. Um, we will need the auto sum button, which can be accessed here as shown. There's all this other stuff which is presumably for the accounting, the accountants among you. I see no reason that we would need any of these for uh for uh the JIB exams. In fact, I don't even understand what hardly any of them mean. I might need to get in touch with an ACA student and pick their brain. But I'm confident, not, having done the JIB and lectured on it for many, many years, I'm confident none of those will be needed. You can sort data. You can put a filter on a cell just as you can in Excel. You can group and ungroup things. You can basically do all that Excel uh, can. Again, I'm not sure that you'd need the sort function, why you'd ever need to put something in order uh, numerically or alphabetically. Um, sort of thinking off the top of my head now i can't think of any reason it I, it may be possible it may be something you need but i can't think of any reason you would you can zoom you can freeze panes you can set row headers you can do all that stuff in view uh and you can show grid lines and things like that should you should you wish but realistically you're just doing numbers questions uh statement affairs eos's cash flows all you really need is the cells the formulas the sum button and that comma button in my opinion you can bold, italic, underline if you so wish. Notice that I've put fixed charge assets in bold here just to make it look neat and tidy. There is a format painter button. That's quite could be quite useful um, if you'd forgot to hit the comma button. Uh, undo and um, undo and restore or redo are still there. So um, if you make a mistake in a numbers question, you have that function. Change the font size again if you wish. I don't know what the D is, but I'm, I'm sure you won't need it. Again, you can underline. You can fill a cell with a colour. Not sure why you'd want to. But it's there. I, mean, I guess maybe if a numbers question specifically said calculate the prescribed part and you were showing it, you might want to just highlight the cell that actually had the prescribed part in it, perhaps. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not convinced. You know, calculate the specific bond um, and you want to highlight what the bond was. You can put... Uh, numbers or words in a different color font again not sure why you would want to if it's a negative figure you could put it in red but it's already in a minus it's already quite clearly a negative not sure it's needed again alignment in a cell could be useful you might want to you might want to just align these that looks a bit neater again cosmetic is not as important as getting the information down and passing the uh, passing the exam so i'll leave that to your discretion whether you would like to uh, make it as neat and tidy by centralizing numbers you can do percentages here which is quite useful you've got the comma as discussed and you can increase and decrease decimal if you hit the comma button it's already defaulting to two decimal places which is almost certainly likely to be enough well worth noting that if you click on this little button here you have all of the scientific stuff that you can do within a cell. You can format a cell. You can change it to a number, a currency, a date, a fraction. You can align it, wrap it, uh, shrink it. You can put a border on it. You can change the font. You can do all of that within formatting a cell. Again, I think once you've chosen the font, once you've made the cells as wide as you need them and you've put the comma in, I think that's probably all you're going to, uh, to need for the joint board exams. The percentage function is quite useful. Um, and maybe the wrap text if you had a really long title or something. But, but yeah, I'm not convinced. Uh, you can format tables and stuff. I'm not convinced you're going to need any of the styles. And of course, you can insert rows, delete rows uh, and format them, um, format the, the height of them if you needed to. I think it's going to drag them. Delete cells if you've done something wrong and insert a cell um, if you want to add uh, add something. You can also insert a sheet. You can just do that with the with the plus button. So I appreciate you will know all this stuff because it's, it's just Excel, isn't it? Um, my Excel doesn't have them as uh, hidden like this behind uh, little arrows. So it's still useful to see it and it's hugely useful to go uh, and practice with it. One thing I would say at this point, if you go into sheet two, about 70%. If you're doing a cash flow forecast, the 
the old sum button was a bit rubbish if you're adding up uh, a number of different figures I'm just going to put some dummy figures in here and remember what i should have done it's probably highlighted the, uh, enough of this page and selected the comma so it's going to do numbers for me worth noting you can double click on the width of a cell and it'll automatically fit it in just like excel so i'm just going to put some figures in here just to show you the power which you all know that excel has so i don't know uh, really whether this is necessary but so let's say you had a load of figures in a cash flow you could sum in this direction so you go to formulas, you go to auto sum, and it guesses what you want to what you want to include. So it's added both of those rows up horizontally. The old sum button on the old software was really fiddly. It worked quite well vertically, but it hated working horizontally. It also hated where there was a break, e.g. four cells here, and then G6 has got a break in it. It wouldn't do that. It wouldn't it wouldn't calculate it this one is clever enough to know that you clearly want those four things calculated and is clever enough to do so because it's excel equally it will do calculations vertically sorry don't need insert function and you won't need it in the exam auto sum it will work that way also worth noting if you wanted to repeat a formula I'll do, I'll do equals plus and minus because this is a cash flow. You might have uh, opening balance, cash movement, closing balance. and You'd want to repeat the various formulas thereon. So we want to add C, C6 and C7. And we know that we want the same to happen to, to, to columns D, E and F uh, and even H. We can simply look here, that little button at the bottom of the right hand corner of, of, of the cell, which the old software did not have, but Excel does, and this software does. Hallelujah, I hear you scream. I can now repeat a formula. And look at that. It has worked out exactly what you wanted. So you expand that cell, it's added them all up and shows the totals. A cash flow, I mean, we're, I hated cash flow forecast when I did joint board, but I'm always praying it comes up this year because the software is going to make it so much more easier to do it. And what you would do if this was your cash flow forecast. For example. At this point, you'd probably just drag this down so you can see a little bit more. You'd copy and paste your whole answer, which of course is not a complete answer. We don't have the time. And it was a cash flow in part C. It'd be a nice question, wouldn't it? Statement of affairs in part A and then cash flow in part C. Call it five marks. And you just control C, control V, and look, your cash flow brilliantly appears in the word processor area. Worth noting that you can now amend directly in the word processor area. Of course, that's going to mess your formulas up. That's not a formula. For me, I'd be I'd be very tempted if I'd spotted some mistakes to just delete this whole thing um, and redo it in, in the spreadsheet area and copy and paste it back in. But it's up to you. If it's a small area, you just notice that, that you actually put that as, as three and it should have been four uh, and so on. Uh, you could, you could, you know, you could do so. Still allows you to drag this. It's just a bit fiddly trying to go back in, to be honest. I would I would just delete and start again. Notice that it does take away the formatting a little bit. It's, 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 it's produced it in Arial uh, 12, and it's also uh, shrunk that cell because there was no data in it. But again, it's given, it's put all the information in there. So the good news is, the fantastic news is I'm underplaying it is we now have basically Word and we basically have Excel. It's everything we need is everything we used to in practice. The reality is the joint board said to me once, this is the reason we haven't used Excel. We don't want a program that uses Excel is because this is not an examination of how good you are in Excel. I said, that's fine. But 
nearly every IP, 99.74% of insolvency professionals use Word and Excel. So why don't we give them those tools in the exam? And I'm glad to see, not that they've probably listened to me, but I'm glad to see that they've taken the advice of everybody and the advice of students on board. Well done, the ICAW, for producing this, this magnificent piece of software. It's, it, it really is fantastic. It's really what the joint board has needed um, since, since this came out. That's pretty much it in terms of what you can do on this software. And it's really, really all you need, uh, all you need to know. So the hot tips to remember. Fit the screen exactly how you need it. Now, it's worth noting, even the ACA haven't even put any questions up on this blank practice office. We have nothing to do. Stay tuned just for the last five minutes of this webinar. Don't switch off yet. I'm going to show you how to fudge a way of putting a question uh, uh, next to it, if I, if, 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 if I can. Actually, I don't think I, I don't think I'll be able to do that because it's not. Um, I haven't got the restore down buttons on here, so I'll, I'll show you that on uh, on a later webinar. How to how to dock a question next to next to the software. What you essentially do is you um, restore down the web page. Mine's showing in full view. I think it's because I'm on Zoom. Um, and you then restore down your PDF and you dock them next to each other. Watch my other video on that that will be on the NTI app to show you how to do it. Um, fit the question in. Hopefully the joint board will select the last year's mock and upload it to the software once it's approved. In fact, they actually had the last two years mocks on the software. So um, that, was, that was incredibly useful. The hot tip is find what works for you. How far you have this roughly across the page that fits a question and works for you. Navigate this. When word processor mode is being used, get rid of your spreadsheet area and use as much of the space as you can. When you're not using word processor and using spreadsheet, give yourself enough room to see, uh, to see this. Practice, practice, practice. It's a massive part. I know it's basically Word and Excel, but it's still slightly different in the way it's viewed and used so if you're a JIB student NTI or otherwise you've got to start using this every question you do every question we recommend you submit to your learning mentor for marking and approval every numbers question practice you do has to be in this software and you have to practice copy and pasting it into the word processor area saving the question which I'll show you in a minute and then submitting it to your mentor I cannot recommend it enough to save the question, you simply have to skip through all of the questions on here, get to the end, and it will ask you if you're finished. And if so, it will then automatically save a PDF. I'm going to start that process now because it takes ages on my, maybe it's my Wi-Fi or just on this computer to skip between the question panes. I'm hoping it's, it's quicker in the real exam. So what's going to be incredibly useful in the exam this year? is the ability to practice on this. Now, if the joint board create one that's got a real mock exam, which was last year's paper, we will use that for your mock exam in October with NTI. The final day of your passing exam course, you'll be bringing a laptop or, 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 we, or we'll use an exam centre, depending on when things start to open, and you'll be able to access a real mock on the software and be able to do it. That may be the only full mock that you can actually have uploaded to the software, which will be your one and most important practice. Now, I'm gonna show you in this separate video exactly how to dock a PDF or a Word document or any document exactly next to the software, which means you could still do a full mock next to it, but it'll just, it'll just be a bit of a fudge. So I'm just just trying to show let's see if I could get them the restore down button on here. I can't. So if, when you want to save, you'd go through each of the four questions that there would be on the JIB software, not five, and you would get to the final screen. So just bear with me, my toolbar keeps appearing when I want to click on it. And you would hit on the final button and it would say 
are you finished? So when you click off your last question, it says, if you want to go back and view your work, use the left arrow in the header uh, or the overview menu button so you can go back to any questions. To export your responses and finish the exam, click export. After you've done this, you'll not be able to re-enter. Now, the old software, the previous software had a countdown timer. And when that finished, it automatically exported your answer and closed down the screen, which happened in the real exam. Here, uh, I'm not quite sure what will happen because there wasn't a countdown timer on this. I think that might be a consequence of this being a practice software. And in the real exam, certainly for JIB, you will have the countdown timer on screen. And when that finishes the three and a half hours, it will close down and export. But if you're just spending 40 minutes or however long an hour practicing a JIB question and want to save it to market or save it to send to your mentor or anyone at NTI to mark for you, um, you will be able to, to you, you'll be able to do so. It's also worth noting that we'll recommend that you bring a laptop to every single face-to-face -face lecture when we're allowed back in the lecture rooms, really soon we hope. When we're allowed back in the lecture rooms, we'll do every question practice, every note, every numbers question we do on your laptop and I can you know we can circulate the room and help you and go this is what you should have done here this is how I'd lay this out this is how I'd save some time there and that is going to be the true benefit of face-to-face -face lecturing you can't beat it and you can't replace that particularly when you need to practice on such important exam software now note that it says response file practice test response 161 has been exported to the USB base direct directory successfully and now it's brought me back to the first screen where I need to log in again. So really simply, just to bring this up for you, if I now go in here, uh, it will have saved a version of the blank software for me. Practice response uh, 161. That looks like it was the one that was done earlier. Doesn't matter too much. Uh, but, it, but, it, but it will appear in here uh, once it's uh, once it's loaded up. Trust me, I did try that earlier, and 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 and, and I opened the PDF, and it and, and it had my uh, my saved answers for for you. So all you do, exit the software, and it will convert a PDF, and it will save it exactly where you saved your uh, your file. That's it from me. That is the exam software. Just a final caveat. This is the day before the joint board have even seen the software and had it recommended to them by the joint board. So any changes or anything that, 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 that indicates they will not be using this software, we'll bring it straight to you via the NTI newsroom and via email if you're one of our, our, our students. But we are confident this will be the software that we use in the exam. Hot off the press. As always, if you have any questions, please do contact me. It's rb at nti.co.uk. Love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Any questions, any discussions, you know exactly where I am. Thanks for tuning in today. Goodbye.